Hi, this is Rich. I'll be working on my 1995 115 horsepower Mercury two-stroke outboard. Uh, today I'm replacing the, the rev limiter, and the rev limiter is to prevent your engine from over-revving. Um, in my case, the problem that I was having was that um, I'd be driving along and then there would be a chirp from the alarm in the front, and then, then it would be uh, that there would just be a very quick momentary loss of power. It would just feel like striking a log on there. And at first it didn't bother me too much. It was just something that would happen once, maybe twice during an outing. And usually uh, I'd be above 35 or 40 miles an hour and it would uh, happen. And then as time went on, it got worse and worse. Somebody told me that the problem was that the ground wire that's on the power pack switch box on here, that it was shorting out uh, on the um, kill switch and that I should disconnect that and if I disconnect that and ran without it if that fixed the problem then that was the rev, the rev limiter on here so I did that disconnected the ground wire and I'll show you where that's at uh, went out fishing for an entire day drove around quite a bit and did not have any problems at all so today I'm going to be replacing this and hopefully the next time I go out fishing there won't be any problem so the first thing I wanted to show you was we're going to take this top off, take the cowling off, switches down. We lift up on the back end and lift it up and kind of tilt it forward and then remove it. It's a little awkward for an old man. So that's off. And then the next thing we have to do is remove the lower cowling as well, because where we need to go is just about right there. So normally the easiest one and safest one to disconnect is the negative post. I do have one wire that's still on there. It's because I have a set of voltmeters here on the back end to tell me what the voltage for each of my batteries is. We have to remove, this is in the back of the motor. We have to remove this bolt and this bolt and that will open up the back end. On the front side we have two more bolts to remove. We have this one here and then this one here as well and that will let us take off this bracket here that the cowling is attached to. And I'm also going to take off this piece of uh, rubber stripping around here just for easier access. One more place that we have to get to is on the port side of the motor there is a bolt that holds the two halves together and that's this, this bolt right here. On the bottom one, which I like to do first because the top one will keep the tension off if we, if we do the bottom one first. It's a 5 16 inch nut. I have a 3 8 to a quarter inch adapter so I can use that small socket on there and then I've got a U-joint on the 3 8 and a very long extension in my ratchet. So we'll be do, we'll, we will be doing we will be doing both of these bolts. The bolt under here is also a 5 16 and I will be using a straight extension with the adapter to allow me to use the 5 16 socket on the end of that. I guess Mercury just wanted to throw us for a loop. The two nuts in the front, these lock nuts, they're the ones that hold down the cowling clip clamp and uh, they are metric. They are um, 10 millimeter. So you'll need a 10 millimeter socket down there and I use a Harbor Freight wobble extension which gives you just maybe a, a quarter to three eighths of an inch of movement in there to get away from this uh, cover that's on the right here. There is a lock nut and the washer that is, um, that is under the lock nut before you can take off the, um, the hold down. Be careful not to drop the nuts or the washers down there. Uh, might be a little difficult to retrieve them if they slide too far. So now we're going to take the lower cowling off. I've already removed the pieces of rubber from the front. I'm going to do it in the back back here and then we should be able to let me get this turned around now. We should be able to go ahead and and take it take it off without too much trouble. Okay, we have removed the right hand side um, cowling, lower cowling, which after we took out all those uh, bolts, it just pulls apart 
you don't have to take the, uh, the port side off, all you need is the uh, starboard side. The rev limiter and the heat sensor are both stacked together on the starboard side of the engine. These are 5 16 inch bolts also. We'll be taking those off and taking off, uh, unplugging it, and then reconnecting it. So the ground wire that I was telling you about is behind this. We're going to have to remove this so we can get to the, to the switch box slash power pack. These are 5 16 inch bolts also. I've started to take them out. Some mercury mechanic long ago took that one out and I guess threw it away because it was too hard to get to so he didn't mess with it. Uh, so you have those other ones. I don't know if I'll, I think if I order anything else from mercury I'll probably order a replacement for that. The downside of that is it's very difficult to get to unless you take off the lower cowling. And there's a lot of times that you want to get to the power pack switch box just in case you wanted to do some testing on the wiring in there or just to see how things are. So anyway, we're going to take that off, 5 16 nuts, and then I'll show you where that wire is. So we have the cover off, and you can see where I, I took the one wire off, and I taped it up so that I could do my test run on that. And it is on this post there. It is the third one down on the left-hand side, so there's actually two rows that come down. But the easiest way to identify it is, I don't know if I can get it to it, this wire is black with a yellow stripe on it. And uh, in my service manual, it says that that's pretty standard for most outboards, especially Mercury's, that the, um, this, this wire leads up to the kill switch. And this black wire that I've got taped up, this will eventually work its way on down to the uh, rev limiter. And I don't know where it's shorting out. That's why I'm, I'm hoping this will take care of it. If not, I guess I could just watch my revolutions and make sure I never overrev the engine and just leave that disconnected if that's the only thing that that does. Um, the cover for this is taped up, but it's it's just like all the rest of them here. It seals it up completely. So that's what we're going to do. We'll replace the rev limiter and then we'll put that nut back on that post and put everything back together and we should be ready for a trial run. So this is the old rev limiter. And, uh, when I took it off on the back side of it, I noticed that uh, it looks like it had been over torqued. You got several cracks on each each side of this. See, this is, it's a smaller one, but it's it's going up that way. Come on, let's focus. And then on this side, you've got several quite evident, plus a whole crack on this side here. When I, um, I've had this into the shop a couple of times when I first bought it for, for different things. And uh, I noticed when I was working on something else, that these bolts looked like they'd been, I don't want to say stripped, but they'd been rough housed. I'm thinking that somebody else took this off and then when they put them back, they didn't torque it to spec. But I, I'm thinking that's what my problem is, that, that inside there's, um, of course there's a lot of oil in a two-stroke. And I think either oil got in there because it's right up against the engine block on top of that heat sensor thing. Something got in there, maybe spray. Anyway, I'm not real happy with the way that looks. So we'll put the new one on. So I replaced the rev limiter. And when I screwed it down, I just did it wrist tight. I checked my um, service manual. I could not find any torque specifications, but the uh, wires on the backside of the rev limiter stack on top of the other side of the um, I guess it's the overheat module whatever that sensor is called and that's up against the block and its wires are uh, towards the block as well so I was afraid to torque it too much I put uh, kind of wrist tight on here and uh, I don't know I would guess maybe 40 inch pounds tops but I just did it by wrist I didn't use my torque wrench on it and then I bundled the wires a little bit better and uh, and I've reattached the um, where are you here this wire here and when you if you pull these off be careful I thought these slid on these wires they do not 
So, and then uh, I noticed one was damaged, so I put some um, black silicone on here, some Permatex silicone, to shield that wire. It was rubbing against the one up above it. And, uh, and then just check all of them, they should be in place. So now we're gonna put this cover back on here again, and uh, then I will do the, um, the lower cowling again. And I should be done. Okay, I got the uh, rear electrical cover is uh, back on. And uh, my uh, new module is in down there, as I mentioned. And uh, while I was putting everything back together again, I found a bolt that's laying down by the steering arm. And uh, I found a, a hole in my exhaust manifold cover. So I got out the old torque wrench and I torqued everything back down. 18, 18 foot-pounds for everything all around there. So around the base of the motor, all around, is this ridge. It's like a pipe that comes around and on the inside of your cowling you can see there's a groove and that's on both sides front and back so you need to make sure that when you're putting this back together that you put the cowling on this get them both sides get both sides together and then you're going to put that bolt in the back end just finger tight all right and then what i've done now let's see down here is this top bolt. I tightened that uh, just finger tight to get it. Um, oh, my here is an, it's like a lip. It goes all the way around this cowling. I, now remember I did not remove the left or port side cowling so it pretty much stayed where it was. And uh, so I cinched it up. I got this matched up all around. There's a little lip and it goes all the way around to the front. Make sure you get that all lined up. And then when you get them together, squeeze them together, kind of quick like a bunny, get a bolt in back here. And that'll hold that back cover back together again. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put those, um, put that uh, front cover uh, holder, that little clamp, and it's not a clamp, it's the receiver for the clamp, and the uh, little lock nuts. So that's the next thing I'm going to put on. And then you know, I'll get that screw that's all the way in the bottom there. Now, I'm going to leave everything loose for the time being until I get everything on, and then I'll tighten it all down. And I will give you the torque specs in a few minutes. The bolts in the back are 65 inch pounds, not foot pounds, 65 inch pounds. The one that goes over, excuse me, the one that goes under the front of the cowling back there, that is also 65 inch pounds. Now the manual says to install the clip and the one on the starboard side uh, there's just one hole in this clamp or the, you know, the clamp that goes on here. So you, you tighten that one down. It does not specify any um, torque specific. There's no torque specification. This one is open on this end so you have to wait until you tighten this one to the 65 inch pounds then you can tighten the port bolt on this side. Again, there is no specification. So that's it. We've uh, put it all back together again. I have replaced the rev limiter. And that's it for now. Hopefully nothing else will break for a while. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them here and I'll get back to you. Thanks.